A senior police officer warned Tuesday of calls for more rioting in Amsterdam, after dozens of people armed with sticks and firecrackers set a tram on fire Monday night as the city faces tensions following violence last week targeting fans of an Israeli soccer club. Olivier Dudel, of the Amsterdam Police Force, told a court hearing that, we have signals that there are calls for similar unrest in the west of the city. Police said the fire Monday was quickly extinguished and riot officers cleared the square. Images online showed people damaging property and setting firecrackers. There were no reports of any injuries. Police said it was not clear who started the unrest and whether it was related to what happened last week. Some rioters could be heard on video shared on social media using slurs against Jewish people. Police noted the tense atmosphere since five people were treated in the hospital and dozens detained Thursday following a Maccabi Tel Aviv Ajax match. Youths on scooters and on foot went in search of Israeli fans, punching and kicking them and then fleeing to evade police, according to Amsterdam's mayor. Pro-Palestinian demonstrators were banned by local authorities from gathering outside the stadium. Before the match, Maccabi fans also tore a Palestinian flag off a building in Amsterdam and chanted anti-Arab slogans on their way to the stadium. There were also reports of Maccabi fans starting fights. Dutch police announced five new arrests Monday in their investigation into that earlier violence. The suspects are men aged 18 to 37 and are from Amsterdam or surrounding cities. Four are still in custody. The fifth has been released but remains a suspect. Earlier, police said that four other men who had been arrested last week would remain in custody while the investigation continues. Two of those are minors, a 16-year-old and a 17-year-old from Amsterdam. The other two men are from Amsterdam and a nearby city. Police said they have identified over 170 witnesses and have taken forensics evidence from dozens. Prime Minister Dick Schuff said they were also examining videos posted to social media. Schuff was meeting with community leaders Tuesday afternoon to discuss anti-Semitism. Reports of anti-Semitic speech, vandalism and violence have been on the rise in Europe since the start of the war in Gaza, and tensions mounted in Amsterdam ahead of Thursday night's match. The mayor has banned all demonstrations in the city and declared several parts of Amsterdam risk zones where police can stop and check anyone. D. Uzans were detained on Sunday for taking part in a pro-Palestinian demonstration in central Amsterdam that had been outlawed. A small demonstration was ended by police Tuesday outside Amsterdam City Hall during a debate about the unrest, Dutch broadcaster Nas reported.
Over the past 24 hours, the Ukrainian defense forces have killed and wounded about 1,770 Russian occupiers in battle. The soldiers also destroyed 272 units of military equipment and weapons of the Russian troops on the front. The total number of manpower losses suffered by the enemy on Ukrainian soil over more than 2.8 years of full-scale war amounts to approximately 710,660 invaders. The General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported updated data as of November 11. In addition to the large number of invaders, the defenders on the eve subtracted 40 combat armored vehicles, 34 artillery systems, and 4 tanks from the Russian army. Two Russian cruise missiles and 57 operational tactical level drones were shot down in the sky. The fighters burned another 119 units of enemy vehicles and tankers, and 16 units of special equipment. The remaining losses of the Russian armed forces in the war against Ukraine remained at the same level, minus 1,245 MLRS, 996 air defense systems, 369 aircraft, 329 helicopters, 28 ships slash boats and a submarine. As the General Staff notes, 160 combat clashes were recorded during the past day. There were three attacks by the occupiers in the Kupyan direction during the day. The defense forces repelled enemy assaults near Kindrasivka, Zagrazovi and Zeleny Gay. In the Lyman direction, the enemy attacked six times. He tried to advance near the settlements of Grakivka, Terny, Torsky and Sarabrianka. In the Kramatorsk direction, three clashes were recorded in the areas of Stepaki and Shesevoy Yar. In the direction of Toritsk, the enemy launched 16 attacks near Toritsk and Sherbanivka. In the Pokrovsky direction, our defenders stopped 35 assault and offensive actions of the aggressor in the areas of Myrolubivka, Promeny, Hryharivka, Solidovoy, Lasivka, Sikoy Yar and Petrivka.